Hello, my legends. Tio here. Hope you've all had a lovely holiday, or are having, in the middle of one. I have a cold. I have, a, you know, the f it's flu season, isn't it? We were we were in England over Christmas, so we flew there and we flew back. And uh, my God, the amount of people who are coughing out in the open. We were in the pub at the restaurant, and we were waiting for our flight. And there was a woman sitting facing everyone sitting in the air, in the restaurant. And she was just coughing out in the open, not covering herself, coughing towards everyone. You know, coughs travel a good, what, eight meters? They can travel to eight, ten meters, something like that. No wonder I'm sick. Anyway, so we, we've gotten the rant out of the way. I hope you're all doing well. Um, it's been a long time since I've done one of these. And I kind of miss it, because it's, it's how I get to sit down and touch wood. Touch wood? Um you know, touch base, that's the saying, with, uh, with my viewers. The decade is ending, and I thought it would be fun to do a bit of a decade recap review commentary. Not really sure what I'm calling this. Um, you guys have all seen, over the last 10 years, the YouTube side of me, the uh, a lot to do with games, and every now and then I'll come with stories from my life, uh, that gives you a glimpse of, of, of my private life. But the public side of me mostly is what I do here, what I'm playing games. So I thought we'd do a bit of a recap, a bit of a look back at the last 10 years, uh, look at some of the highlights, and uh, at the end, I don't know, maybe we'll come with a nice life lesson. Maybe we'll learn something. Maybe we'll learn something about me. Maybe this will all reflect onto your life. I don't really know, but I thought we could do a cozy little uh, end of the decade video here. It's quite fitting that I started my YouTube channel 10 years ago, pretty much. Just kidding. Didn't I start in 2008? Maybe I started... Hold on, I gotta go check this. I, uh, 2008. It's not fitting. It was 2008 that I started my channel. So, let's do another intro. Um, I entered the decade with a one-year-old YouTube channel. Uh, that was my little side project. And I entered the year in gymnasium. That's what we call it in Sweden. Upper secondary school, high school. I've been Googling around trying to find a good translation, but it depends on where you're from. I was basically, I was 16. Funny story, actually, I, I had this school that I really wanted to get into, and uh, I didn't, I just barely missed out on getting into it, or so I thought. On the day that this school opened up, there were a few students who, last minute, decided to go to another school, and because I was next in line, the principal tried to get a hold of me on the morning of uh, when the school opened up, and they couldn't get a hold of me, so they called my dad, uh, who was in Afghanistan at the time, in Kabul. He was in Afghanistan for work, so <laughs> the principal called my dad, and my dad answered in Afghanistan, basically said, Hi, yeah, what, what's up? I'm in Afghanistan. I, I don't know, I'm, I don't know, I'm not sure if that's exactly what he said. The principal said, Hey, Theo got, uh, got into the school that he wants to get into. My dad was like, Okay, well, I'll... I'll let them know, and uh, the principal was very surprised to hear that he was in Afghanistan. Then he called my mom, who then woke me up, and uh, that's how I got into that school. I had the swine flu then. I'm actually, I'm at the end of 2009 here. I'm cheating a little bit, but if we're talking about the beginning of the decade, I mean, we all remember the, the swine flu, right? Good times. I had the swine flu. I had it. I was off. I was away from school for like three weeks, and then when I finally got out of having the swine flu, when I got better... Um, I got pneumonia instead. So it was a really bad month for me. I went through these phases during these, you'll notice during these years, where I'd go from having this long, not long hair. I mean, I used to have long hair a few years earlier. But I, I had this unattended medium, this medium length hair unattended. I'd go from that to just like shaving my head. It was a tradition. When I was a little boy, I used to have a shaved head. And then I would, it would grow out until it was long, and then eventually my dad would shave it again. And we, that, that was what I did. And so I had long hair when I was a bit younger because I wanted to hide my, my ears. I was a bit self-conscious. I was very self-conscious about my ears because they're quite big and, you know, they, they stand out a lot. And it took me a while to get over them. And then eventually I got over them, in which I came to this phase where I'd go from this unattended, didn't really do much with this, this hair, 
to uh, shaving it off. So 2010, I, I shaved it off. What more happened in 2010? Oh, I went diving. Yeah, I went diving. I went to Thailand where my brother was that year and uh, dived for uh, for two years. Two, <laughs> two. <laughs> I I stayed there for two years for uh, two weeks over the summer 2010. Yeah, I went diving. I also met, as you know now, I had a YouTube channel that I was working on. That was the year that I met Tabes. He was a he was quite a big Swedish Call of Duty YouTuber. Um, and I met him at the, I remember this, I met him at the, I used to go to the midnight release for whatever Call of Duty was releasing each year. And that year was Call of Duty Black Ops and uh, Tabes was there. And I remember <clears throat> I was, I looked up to quite a few YouTubers back then. Um, I had a channel of a quite a small size, but I was growing. I was in the middle of growing. 2010, in, in fact, was when uh, my channel went from having a few hundred subscribers to, you know, 10,000. It was a big year for me, for the channel. But I remember seeing Tabes, and uh, I was really nervous. And I walked up to him and I said, hi, you know, and I was shaking. I could tell a lot of people in there, because it was a Call of Duty release, and he was a big Call of Duty YouTuber. They knew who he was, but not a lot of people came up and said hi. But I, 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 I remember being proud that I dared to say hi and, uh, got a sell and got this picture with him, basically. And so whenever someone meets me now, actually, I think about, I, I, I've been there, you know, I think about that. Um, I know that feeling of being nervous and just seeing a YouTuber that you know. Anyway, yeah, <clears throat> that's 2010. Anyway, I'm, I'm really drifting off here. 2011, this picture I came across when going through 2011. This is, um, I burned my finger, <clears throat> or my hand, basically. Uh, I got electric, I got an electric shock. Uh, so I had this hard drive that stopped working. You know what? I think the the cable broke kind of in the middle, the power cable. And so, I don't know, I had some really fucking stupid, I had some moronic idea that I would kind of tape together the cable and <laughs> shove it in the so electric socket anyway. Anyway, as you could expect, I did it and it kind of popped and blew, like there was a little bit of smoke. And uh, I electrocuted myself. And I remember, I remember posting this picture on Facebook and saying I got electrocuted. And then I went to take a nap for a few hours. And, my, and when I woke up, I had like 11 missed calls from my mom and like eight missed calls from my dad. My mom probably, she got nervous. She tried to call me and uh, couldn't get a hold of me. And obviously they just kept calling, trying to get hold of me because they were really nervous about it. Turns out I, I eventually I called them back when I had woken up after a few hours and said, I'm, I'm fine. I just took a nap, but not, not my brightest moment, this. So it's a good thing I'm putting it in this video so we could all remember this. Uh, what more happened 2011? Oh, I got fined. I got fined a thousand crowns. That's about $120 and, uh, you know, 100 euro, 100 pounds ish. I got fined a, a thousand Swedish kroner, basically, because I didn't pay for the the bus card slash train card, you know, these monthly cards, these tickets that you have. Um, I didn't have one. I'd just jump over the, uh, when I took the subway, I'd just jump over the gate. And these cops, they were dressed undercover. So I jumped over, didn't have a ticket, jumped over to get to the subway. And I get grabbed by two men who take me into a small hall, a uh, really dark hall. <laughs> And, and they were like, we got you. I was like, what? And then they told me what had happened, basically saying why they had grabbed me and saying that they were cops. They were undercover. They weren't even dressed like cops. They were standing there civ as civilians. I remember thinking, don't you have something better to do than stand here undercover waiting for people to not pay for their ticket and jump over? Um, so that was the year I got fined for that. I mean, I don't, fair enough. You know, I just remember being so surprised that they had put that effort in. But, you know, all props to them, because they got me. We used to have this tradition in the summers, <clears throat> went on for probably a good five, six years. Uh, I would invite a group of friends, anywhere from five to eight friends, depending on the year, it varied, to our summer house, my family's summer house, and we'd be out there for anywhere from a week to two weeks. And this, I believe, going by the pictures, was the last year that uh, we all went out there. It was, uh, and I, I just wanted to mention it because it's a nice memory. 
Um, oh, and I met my first viewer. My, I used to call them fans. I don't like calling them fans. Over the last few years, I don't like... If I meet you guys on the street, I, 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 I dislike saying, oh, I met a fan. Because um, I feel like it, you might not be a fan. You could be a viewer, but you might not feel that you're a fan. So I don't like implying that people are fans just because they recognize me. But yeah, I uh, met my first viewer. Right then, on to 2012. We're storming through the years. This is actually... <laughs> <clears throat> I'm an, I'm, I feel like I'm taking a long time going through each year here, but this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to kind of have this chill commentary where I know a lot of you guys often say that you appreciate me letting you into my life. And this is the ultimate <laughs> video for that. I'm really just letting you into my decade. Um, it's, been a very, it's been very therapeutic so far, I feel. 2012. 2012 is the year that I apparently met a lot of lookalikes for uh, celebrities. Here's a bus driver. I remember this. I remember <laughs> going in saying, oh my God, you look exactly like John Lithgow. John Lithgow, if, for those who don't immediately know who it is from this absolute uh, perfect lookalike, he played the, uh, well, I knew him from Dexter, played uh, the Trinity killer in Dexter. And uh, so I asked him if I could take a picture of him, and he thought it was very funny. And I got to take a picture, and I posted it on Facebook. <laughs> and this is uh, obviously Dave Chappelle. Uh, we went to Rhodes that year in Greece, and he really embraced it. He really embraced the whole Dave Chappelle um, feel. He um, had this whole skit, put on a voice and everything, tried to sound like him. Also, side note, during the same trip, I lost my sunglasses. And I remember the next day looking through my pictures, and then I'm pretty sure this kid is wearing my sunglasses, and he's in the midst of running away with my sunglasses on in this picture. Um, just thought that was funny. I believe this this is the year I got offered a uh, uh, model thingy. For those who don't know, I uh, I got offered a model agency. They went through the school class pictures of every class and found people they thought uh, would fit. And then they contacted me asking if I was interested in doing a photo shoot with them. In this picture, I had a shaved head, but it was taken, you know, a few months ago, previous. So I had let it grow, grow out since then. And they said, hey, we want you to shave your head again for the, this photo shoot. So naturally, I shaved my head once again and uh, went in for a photo shoot. They, they wanted to do a photo shoot and then they were going to send it out to different advertising agencies and stuff and companies. And I actually got invited to a Japanese agency that was in town. And I remember showing up and uh, they were looking for a couple of models to bring back to Japan with them. <laughs> I felt really out of place because when I arrived, it was like 30 other people who were all obviously waiting in this hotel lobby for this. I could tell because they all looked the same. They all had black hair, quite nice black hair, half long kind of to the side. And then there was me, this like guy with blonde, like light brown shaved head. So I stood out like a sore thumb and um, I uh, took a few pics with them uh, when I got called and gave them some info and I never heard from them again. And then the model agency disappeared. So I only, I only ever got to see one picture that they shared on Facebook and I shared it on mine. I didn't save it. So those photos from the photo shoot we took uh, I've tried many times. I can't find them. The The model agency disappeared. They, they went under. So the photos from the photo shoot that we took, they're gone. But I remember they gave me a nose piercing. Well, what looked like one. It wasn't a real one. And then it had a chain hook, uh, hooked up to it going to another piercing in my ear with a chain in between. Because I don't have the photo, I may... Uh, you know what? I'll make, I'll make a quick version of it so you can imagine it for yourselves in... I'll make it in paint. Does this paint still exist? Oh, it does. All right, here we go. Uh, hey. Hey. Nice. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? I'm Where making it? them. Uh, it's me. I'm making them. Uh, I'm gonna put up a. F I'm because there's no photo of me from being a model back then. So I'm making. Them, <laughs> I'm making. They so can imagine how it looked. <laughs> God, this is awful. What do you think, Cuddy? <laughs> what the fuck is this? What's going on on the right? Why are you looping? I couldn't. I'm trying to. I had my knees up with my arms around. I couldn't. I'm not an artist. What is that? If anything, you should have. Gimme. Come on. Oh, that's better. Yeah. No, 
and uh, that's much better <laughs> instead Thanks. of this infinity loop you <laughs> <going through>. <laughs> <laughs> anyway so <clears throat> that went well i'm clearly not an artist but basically this is me i had the yeah i think you hopefully get it um anyway so that 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 was a time and that boosted my confidence like crazy just being called up by model agency um obviously it didn't go anywhere but it was really, it was a cool experience to be with this professional photographer. So that that was all I had from the photo shoot, and I didn't even get to save that. So, um, well, it was the year that I graduated, graduated, and um, I was done with studying, basically. I was turning 19 that year, and um, I decided, I had all these friends who were saying they're going to England to study, or they're studying in Sweden. I decided to take, I decided to, not do anything else. I just decided to <laughs> stay at home and play games and make videos for YouTube. At the time, I was making enough money that it was almost like a half-time job, basically. And so I decided to spend some time to try to see if I could do full-time YouTube and see what where I could get it. 2013, after spending about a year doing just YouTube, I'd stay up until 5 a.m. playing games, recording and making videos. Had a great time. Probably wasn't the best health-wise. Um, my YouTube channel had neither gone up or down. It was kind of just at the same level, same level of views. I had more subscribers, but nothing had really changed in terms of views and um, money, obviously. So that was the year that I started uh, retail, actually. I started working at a retail store. Don't have a lot of stories from it. It was just something I did for a few years, and uh, and it was very good for me to get out there, get out of my apartment, mine, my parents' apartment, get out of our my just living at home every day and actually doing things and meeting people. Funny story actually from when I had one of my interviews to, uh, to start working there. They obviously did a checkup on me to see if I had any previous, to see if I have any history basically with the police. They were really liking me from all the interviews and then eventually the letter came with uh, a statement of my past with, with the police, you know. And uh, there was one thing listed, and that was the time that I jumped the subway gate without uh, paying and uh, getting fined for it. And I remember remember the, him reading it and then uh, just ripping it up and being like, it's fine. That's that's okay. You can still work here. So, yeah, it was, it was a really great workplace. I started climbing that year, which was a lot of fun. been climbing a lot over the years, on and off. I have periods where I start climbing. My niece was born. I love fat babies. I love I love babies and how they just they just like. They're just so, they're just so chunky. <laughs> no, not chunky. I don't know. I just love, I love babies, man. Uh, and it was the year that I met Alex, actually. Uh, a lot of you guys, there's a video that we made a few years ago, many years ago, where we talk about how we first met. There's a whole story. But so I won't, I won't get into it too much. But Alex was a fan. I can say that she was a fan. She was a proper fangirl. And, uh, I don't know, she tweeted at me a few times over the, over that year, 2013. And eventually, eventually we just got to talking because, uh, I, uh, I liked her. And, uh, then like a month later we met up and, uh, this is actually from the first time we met this picture right here after we had, this was after we had been talking for maybe a month or two. I can't really remember at this point. And then, uh, then we spent New Year's together. She came over and spent it together with me and my family, my my brother and uh, his wife and his friends. So that was it. Was a great year. I have fond memories. Things went fast from there. 2014, I moved out. I had been saving money from the retail job, and I actually I asked Alex to move in with me. She was uh, 17 when we met. I think yeah, 17, and I was 20. So 2014. She finished studying and I was going to move out and I invited her. She didn't really know what she wanted to do. So um, I said, why don't you move in with me? We had met up a few times at that point. She moved over to Sweden and that's when we moved in together. I remember I was out with my brother and I was drunk. I just said, hey, crazy idea. What if I invite Alex to come stay with me? And he was supported. He was like, yeah, go for it, dude. If you feel it, you feel it. So I invited her and she was, I invited her that night and she knew I was out with my brother drinking. So the next day I knew that she, and she, she kind of like, oh, okay, that's a good idea. And then the next day I, I sent her another message and I said, like, I meant what I said last night. She was like, okay, I thought you were just being drunk. And I said, yeah, I realize that. So saying it again, would you like to move in with me? And she, uh, she loved that idea. So we moved in together in 2014. I remember that summer because I was moving out, lots of furniture to buy. 
obviously a lot of money. I normally had a 50% contract with retail, so it was half time, so I could do YouTube the other half. But that summer, June, July, August, when I moved, moved in June, I worked retail 100%. It was, it was the, like, I remember at the end of it, the end of August, we were going on a holiday. Alex said, it's nice to have you back, because I'd been so different those months, because I was just stressed out of my mind. And I just, like, took a break from YouTube. I think over the three months, I put up two videos on YouTube. One uh, where I announced that I had moved, and I just said I'll be back soon, basically. And one, ooh, I think that was a CSGO video that summer. Put up the CSGO, may God forgive me, uh, for those who were around back then. It's a good video. It's me and Floppy playing CSGO. It's just a silly video with, like, a trailer at the end. Oh, I also met Bane uh, when I was out one night. I thought he had a great, this guy had a great Bane costume. I got a pick with him. Thought you'd like that. Anyway, <laughs> 2015. We're getting closer now, guys. God, going through these things, I realize how fast time has gone by. It's actually really scary. And how much I've changed and how much I haven't changed. 2010 to 2019. So many things about me has changed. But a lot of me, I feel the same, you know? It's, it's really weird. And I'm scared that the next decade's gonna go by even faster. I found this picture that I put up. A viewer, he tried to make me in class, whatever that is, paper mache or whatever. He tried to make me because he was a fan of my channel. So he made, he made this, which I thought was hilarious. <clears throat> Quite the failed project, I think, but still so funny. So maybe it was a success if you look at it that way. What happened this year? Oh, I sprained my foot this year. It was horrible. I was drunk, fell down the stairs, got really badly bruised. It was like a golf ball. This is the year that I met Floppy for the first time. We had been playing for a few years online, but he came over from uh, New Zealand. And here's us getting surprised. He surprised us. He came over once. And then like a, a few weeks later, he came again, but didn't tell us. So here's, he took, they took pictures as he surprised us at the bar. Oh, I quit retail this year. I went full-time. My lifelong dream. I want to say lifelong. You know, six, seven years of doing YouTube. I was making CSGO videos that year, and they popped off. After many years of kind of being, having a YouTube channel that was doing okay, not really increasing or anything, that year, see, my CSGO videos popped off and, uh, and uh, started streaming as well. In August that year, August uh, 2015. I remember the day I quit just laying down in the grass, went to do some grocery shopping. And then I remember just on the way back, I just laid down in the grass, just staring in the sky. I still remember that feeling of knowing, you know, I've finally done it. No more, no more of these obligations, the things I don't want to do. Now it's just me and the sky's the limit. It was, um, it was a big, big moment for me. Here's uh, just a funny set of pictures I thought you'd like. A story of a man and his banana. This was Alex's friend who put this up on a drunken night. I was eating a banana and she thought it was funny, so she took a bunch of pictures. 2016. This is the year that we got Luna, our, uh, our dog. Here's some puppy pictures. Thought you'd like that. That's the biggest highlight of the year. Actually, no. You know what? We got engaged this year. Well, I, you know, I, on my Facebook, 2016, it says we announced that we got engaged. Um, but I think we got engaged a year earlier. I just don't think we told anyone. The thing with getting engaged when you're young is you get a lot of people it can be quite judgmental. And so we kind of got engaged for ourselves first. I guess it's more of a promise to each other. Floppy took me to the Battlefield 1 release event that year. Thanks for that, Floppy, if you're watching. That guy never watches my videos. I doubt he's, doubt he's still here at this point. This is the year, actually. <clears throat> my videos, the beginning of this year, started not doing so well. It started going a little stale, my channel. And then, because Rainbow Six Siege came out December 20... What year are we in? 2016? Came out 20, end of 2015. So 2016, January, February, I started making Siege videos. In December, January there, my channel wasn't doing so well. And I started thinking, man, do I have to go back to my retail job? And then my videos kicked off, my Siege videos. That year was insane. That was an insane year, YouTube-wise. I'm trying to make this video about other things than YouTube, but it is to be said that that was a crazy year. We attended our first wedding, Alex and I. I'm really just saying that so I could show these photos. Thought we looked nice. Um, yeah, good year, good year. Uh, of all the years, I think 2016 and 2017 
might be my favorite of the decade. I think I think they're close. So 2016, you know, we got Luna, uh, and and my YouTube was doing really well. We had the whole engagement. That was a really good year. Um, had a lot of fun time <clears throat> times playing Rainbow Six Siege that year. And obviously, because my channel was growing so much, it was just such a fun year. Everything was everything becomes fun when your job's doing well. I think everything gets highlighted a lot. It's a lot more fun. 2017, you know what? 2016, second best year. 2017 was the craziest. 2017 was a year of love and friendship and success. Uh, you know, to start things off, it's the year we got married. We got married, it was a July wedding, July 8th. It was a crazy year, actually, because we went to Greece June that year for a week with a bunch, a bunch of us went to Greece and then... You know, two weeks later, bachelor party, off we go again, me and the boys. <laughs> we went to Prague. Next up, after a bachelor party, we got married. Good wedding. <laughs> Solid wedding. I uh, know it was, it was, it was, it was good. I don't, you know, I can go on forever about the wedding. I actually talked about the wedding, showed lots of photos, went through photos and talked about it um, while I was streaming a couple weeks ago. And I put that up on my second channel, Morteo. So if you want to see me talk about the wedding and show wedding photos, Head on over that. Went to, we had a, obviously our honeymoon. We went to Paris, Bruges, and Amsterdam. Really good honeymoon. Good two, two weeks away. It was lovely. What more? I mean, it was a crazy year, right? We got married. Then we moved. Moved a couple mo uh, weeks later to the apartment that we're in now. Moved. Uh, we got back from the honeymoon and immediately started looking at a new place because YouTube was going so well. And then that month, I think, I hit a million subscribers. In the new place, Alex hosted, she set up a surprise party for me with all friends. People flew over from all over the world. Flash met him for the first time. He flew over from Canada. I cried. They had a, they set up a video with a lot of people just saying thanks for the videos and stuff and congratulating me. It was a really emotional moment. Yeah, that, so that was at our new apartment. Big party. And then... Uh, Oh yeah, and I met Dr. Disrespect. I mean, what a year. Got married, hit a million subs, we moved, and I met Dr. Disrespect. Can it, I thought, can it get any better? And then Dr. Disrespect and I met up. No, it was at a Twitch after party. That was cool, getting to see him. Yeah, big year. I think 2017 wins it. Best year of the decade, for sure. What a year. What a year. And, and with how good, I think, I think 2017 stole events from 2018 and 2019, because I've been going through Facebook and Instagram, and I've been looking at what we've been doing over the years. 2018, not much happened 2018. Had a good life, everything was stable, YouTube and streaming, focused a lot on that. Uh, focused a lot on streaming, actually. Um, 2018, just a great year. Some lovely photos here, but not much to say about it, really. Same with 2019. You know what, it gives me time while we go through these photos to just say, um, thank you. Thank you, you know, if you've been watching and you're still watching now, then I assume you're one of those people who are quite supportive of my channel. You've been watching for however long, you know, thank, thank you everyone. Got a great life going so far, knock on wood. Anyway, I said at the beginning of the thing, any life lessons, anything we've learned? Uh, not really, you know, it's just nice to open up a bit, talk about what I've been through. Two, you know, it's funny, I was thinking when I started this, 2010 to 2019 might be the biggest transformation. I go from a guy in school who's just barely got a YouTube channel, doesn't really know where he's going, and uh, here I am 10 years later, I've got you guys here on YouTube, it's all going, I mean, I could never have guessed it 10 years ago, where I am today, or where I would be today. Um, got a lovely wife, a dog, beautiful apartment, what more can a guy ask for, huh? So, um, I think we'll end it there. Thank you guys so much for, for all the love. And I look forward to being here and sharing my life and fun times and games over for another decade, shall we say. Let's say that. Um, I hope you'll be here with me through it all. Anyway, what year, let's hear it. What year did you guys like the most? <laughs> I gotta say 2017, come on. Are there any disagreements? Um, why don't you post in the comments, if you, you know, what was your highlight of the decade? Let's hear it. Much love you guys. I'll, uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.